discusses very important theorem on continuous function that states a mapping f of a matrix space x into the matrix space y is continuous if and only if f inverse v is open in x for every open set v in y. So it is a two-way proof. So before starting the proof, let's recall these remarks first that are very important to understand. The first one is P is called interior point of a set E if there exists R positive such that the neighborhood of P with the radius R is a subset of E. So suppose this is your set E and a point is belonging to the set E. If there exists R positive such that the neighborhood of P belongs to E or that it is a subset of E, then we say that P is the interior point of E, right? And if every point of E is an interior point of E, then we say that E is an open set, right? So for a set to be an open set, all the points of the set should be the interior points. Or we can also say that the neighborhood of all the points of the set belongs to the set. Then is the definition for the continuous functions. Let x and y be the metric space with E is a subset of x and P is belonging to E. And let F be a mapping from E to Y. This is your x metric space where E is a subset of x and a point P is belonging to E. And this F is a mapping from this E to the Y metric space, right? Then F is said to be continuous at P if for every given epsilon positive there exists delta positive depending upon epsilon and P such that the metric distance of fx and fp in y is less than epsilon for all x belonging to E for which the metric distance of x and p in x is strictly less than delta. Please remember if the metric distance Please remember, if the metric distance is less than epsilon, then that distance is in y. And if the metric distance is less than delta, then that distance is in x. Right? So this is about when f is continuous at a point p belonging to e. Right? But if f is continuous at every point of e, that is at all the points of e, then we say that f is said to be continuous on e, the complete e. Right? Now let's start with the proof. Suppose f is continuous on x and v is an open set in y. And we have to prove that f inverse v is open set in x. So it is given that v is an open set in y and we are going to prove that f inverse v is open set in x. Now to prove that f inverse v is open set in x, that means what we have to prove that Every point of F inverse V is an interior point of F inverse V in accordance to the definition of an open set. So that is to prove every point of F inverse V is an interior point of F inverse V. So let's take one point from f inverse v, right? So let, let me take that p is a point taken from f inverse v. Then f of p is belonging to v, yes? But v is an open set, right? And a point is belonging to open set means that point is an interior point of v. So fp is an interior point of v. So therefore, fp is an interior point of v. Right? Okay. Now for fp to be the interior point of v, we must define the neighborhood of fp that is a subset of this v. Right? Thus, there exists epsilon positive such that the neighborhood of fp 
with the radius epsilon is a subset of V. Now since F is continuous at P, this is given to us. So using the definition of continuity, therefore there exists delta positive such that the metric distance of fx and fp in y is less than epsilon for metric distance of x and p in x is less than delta. Right? So this implies now metric distance of fx and fp in y means fx is belonging to the neighborhood of fp. Right? The epsilon neighborhood of fp. So this implies fx belongs to the epsilon neighborhood of fp. For x belonging to the delta neighborhood of p. Right? Thus, x belongs to the delta neighborhood of p implies f of x belongs to the epsilon neighborhood of fp. But epsilon neighborhood of fp is a subset of v. So this implies f of x belongs to v which further implies that x belongs to f inverse v. Now from where we have taken this x? Yes? x belongs to the delta neighborhood of p, right? And where we have reached that x belongs to f inverse v, which means the delta neighborhood of p is a subset of f inverse v. So therefore, because the neighborhood of p is a subset of f inverse v, which means p is an interior point of f inverse v. According to the definition of the interior point, P is an interior point of F inverse V. But P was arbitrary. And from where we have taken this point P? We have taken that P is belonging to F inverse V. So which means... Every point of F inverse V is an interior point of F inverse V. So every point of F inverse V is an interior point of F inverse V. As P belongs to F inverse V. Now, when every point of a set is an interior point of the set, then that set is open set. So, therefore, F inverse V is an open set. Hence, F inverse V is an open set. Right? Done? Alright. Now, the other way. Now, the converse. If F inverse V is open set in X, for every open set V in Y, we have to prove that F is continuous on the metric space X. So let's take P a point from the metric space X. Then because F is a mapping from metric space X into Y. So F of P belongs to Y. So for a point belonging to the metric space Y. That is F P belonging to the metric space Y. There must exist a neighborhood of FP belonging to the metric space Y, right? There can exist a neighborhood of FP that belongs to Y. So therefore, for epsilon positive, the neighborhood of FP with epsilon radius, and I can say, uh, let me name this neighborhood to be as V, right? Because this V is a neighborhood and we know that every neighborhood is an open set. So can I write that 
this V is open in Y. So this neighborhood of FP, that is V is open set in Y. So we have searched and open set in Y. By hypothesis, they are saying that F inverse V is open set in X for every open set V in Y. So here we have taken the open set V as the neighborhood of FP with epsilon radius. So by hypothesis, F inverse V is open set in X. Thus, by hypothesis, F inverse V is open set in X. Let's take one point from this F inverse V and uh, let that point be P. So let P belongs to F inverse V. Because F inverse V is an open set, so P is an interior point of F inverse V. Because P is an interior point of F inverse V, so thus there exists delta positive such that why I have taken delta positive because F inverse V is open in x right and for x matrix space we have to take delta so there exists delta positive such that the neighborhood of p with this delta radius is a subset of f inverse v for matrix space y we take epsilon please remember this now because this is the neighborhood of p with delta radius there must be a point belonging to this neighborhood and let me name that point v as x so suppose, therefore, x belongs to the neighborhood of P with delta radius because neighborhood of P is further the subset of F inverse V. So x belongs to F inverse V. This implies F of x belongs to V, right? But V is the neighborhood of FP with epsilon radius. So this implies f of x belongs to the neighborhood of fp. Which further implies the metric distance of fx and fp in y is less than epsilon by the definition for x belonging to the neighborhood of p the delta neighborhood of P, right? So this implies the metric distance of Fx, Fp in Y is less than epsilon for, now what does this imply is that X belongs to the delta neighborhood of P, that is the metric distance of X and P less than delta in X. For metric distance of Xp, less than delta in x right so this is the definition for the continuity but epsilon was arbitrary therefore f is continuous at p but p was also arbitrary and because p was arbitrary therefore f is continuous on yes matrix space x right so the complete proof is done all right thank you